No matter how simple or elaborate or curvy or traditional, a bed can be one of the more simple pieces of furniture to build. Once you understand the basic construction of a bed, the design possibilities are limitless. In this video workshop series, I'm going to show you how to build a queen-size bed based on a traditional arts and crafts design. But the techniques that I'll cover in the next few episodes can be applied to any style bed that you decide to build. I'll show you how I work through all the design and construction details to come up with a working project plan. I'll cover the process of building four sturdy bed posts and joining the parts for the headboard and footboard with mortise and tenon joinery. And I'll also show you how to produce the bed rails and install traditional bed bolts to attach them to the headboard and footboard. Finally, I'll go over finishing options and assemble all of the parts into a finished bed. Whether you're planning on building a bed of your own or just feel like watching me build one, I hope you'll stick around. Who knows, you might learn something. Hi, I'm Matt Kinney, an editor at Fine Woodworking Magazine. In this video workshop, I'll show you how to make this sturdy bench. It's great for hand tool use and power tools. It's got traditional mortise and tenon joinery and also some knockdown bench bolts for adjustability. I've got a good technique to get a nice flat top. So stick around and learn how to make a bench that'll last a lifetime. Hello, I'm Phil Lowe. We're at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts in Beverly. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this class is uh, how to make this bookcase. Uh, it's made of hardwood uh, plywood, uh, oak for in this instance, and it also has hardwood edges that are on the shelves and on the sides, tops and the bottoms as well. We also have some shelf standards in here and a plywood back. On this case, what I'm going to show you how to do is this, uh, this bracket base, which is a solid piece that goes across the front as well as the sides with a nice molding and a little profile on the inside uh, bottom of this. It's mited over its long length here. And also, I'm going to show you how to do this OG bracket foot, which is a little bit different, has a nice profile to the front a little shaping on the front and a molding that runs across the uh, front of the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? This is a great project. I've had a little cabinet like this in my shop for many years full of special planes. I've taught as a class. What's really nice about it is it's a great way to use hand tools to build furniture and it really opens up the possibilities of building lots of other cases such as cases of drawers, similar construction. The technique for putting the case together is sliding dovetails. It's a very strong joint, easily done. I'm going to do it partially on the table saw and partially with a router. And I'm going to show you how to make a face frame, maybe one that you've never seen before, that covers up all the joinery and gives you a very clean corner that you can't even see the joint. I'm going to show you how to fit shelves into dados how to build a solid back that fits into a groove all the way around, as well as a decorative bead that runs between the slats of the back to give it a nice appearance. I'll show you how to build a beveled panel door and hang it with butt hinges. I'm going to show you some decorative details, a nice cove molding with a bead at the bottom, as well as a banding of holly and ebony with a cap of ebony below that. I cut a chamfer on the corner of my case. I'll show you an inlaid corner that's also very nice. I like to start out a project like this with a good drawing. You can draw your own, or you can get a plan for this cabinet from Fine Woodworking. A bit of advice on the wood. I would choose something that's friendly to hand tools. Butternut, cherry, mahogany, white pine can be very beautiful. If you want to use something figured, use it for the door panel. So let's get started. <laughs> 